everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a rustic wood sign. I'm going to be showing you how to take a uh, brand new piece of wood and make it look old, make it look like an old piece of barn wood, and then how I paint letters onto the sign. The sign that I made was for my cousin's wedding, so it's more specific to um, my family, but you can also, you know, use whatever letters you want to make your sign. So I just wanted to share with you this DIY of um, and give you some ideas of what you can do to make your own rustic wood farmhouse type sign. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for all of those who have subscribed and I appreciate you all and enjoy the video today. Thanks. I'm starting off with an unfinished pine board. To give this board that rustic look, you want to use a dark color. I am using dark gray. You can also use a dark stain, or if you want a pop of color to peep through, you can use something like a red or a teal. After your dark base coat has completely dried, then you can start using a lighter color. I am using a cream white. You're going to be using a method called dry brushing. So once you dip your brush into your paint can, you just want to wipe it off on both sides so that you barely have any paint left on your brush. If you accidentally put a little bit too much paint on, you can go back over it with a paper towel and just wipe off the excess. So I'm going to be layering the paint on to give this board this rustic appearance. I completely covered my board more using the flat wide surface of my brush and then as you can see I also start using the thinner edges of my brush to add in little spurts of white just to fill it in so it's lighter and darker throughout the board giving it that varying appearance and that rustic look and here it is finished it's just going to dry a little bit longer once the white is dry I just go over the surface and all of the edges with a piece of sandpaper Here are the words that I'll be using on my sign. I just printed them off on my computer and then just taped them together so that everything lined up. There are a few different methods that you can use to transfer the outline of your letters onto your sign. So since my sign is a lighter color, I am going to be using pencil lead to transfer the outline of my letters. So I just trace over the back of my letters and just fill it all in with the pencil lead. And then you'll see in a minute what I do in order to transfer the letters. So I'm measuring everything here, making sure that it is all centered, and then I tape it down in place. Now that the pencil lead is on the back of your papers, all you need to do is trace the outline of each of your letters, and then what it will do is it will transfer the lead that you put on the back of the paper onto your board. And so you'll see here in a second, you can see the outline is just like you drew it with a pencil. So you're gonna do this over all of your letters, and then you are ready to paint and fill in your letters. I know this here isn't the best angle to see how I am painting the letters. I fix it here in a second, but I am using gray paint to fill in my letters and then the brush that I'm using that you see now has an angle and that works really well to get nice straight edges on your letters. I also use a really fine paintbrush as well to get some of the smaller areas. So I didn't mention earlier, but whenever I have a sign that has two groups of words on it, I like to use both a scroll type font and a more straight font. And it just gives the, the finished look a little bit more variance to it. And I just think it looks more high end, it looks more professional. Here is the better angle so you can see uh, the painting a little bit better. Hand painting letters can be a little bit tedious, so if it's not something that you've done before, you may want to start with just a small sign, maybe something with just one word on it, 
because it does take a little bit of time to hand paint and to get everything with straight edges because you just want to be able to take your time doing it. Once the first coat is finished and dried on all the letters, I do go back over and give all of the letters a second coat. Now, before you think that it's going to take so much longer to do the letters all over again, it is a lot easier to go back and do a second coat. It, t it goes a lot faster than a first coat does. If I make any mistakes, I like to use my fingernails just a little bit to wipe off any extra paint. To finish off my signs, I like to use a matte clear spray paint just to cover all the edges and I like the finished look that way. Here is the finished sign. I hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial today and have fun making your own rustic wood signs. Thank you for joining me and please like this video if you have enjoyed it and follow the links to see more videos like this one. Have a great day!